It's time for another edition of Mark's Madness. Joined as always by Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, we've got so much to talk about. We had the holidays, so we were off for a couple of weeks. A lot of basketball took place during that time, though. I know you were out for a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Let's jump right in, start with the Western Buckeye League. Give us an update. How does the league sit right now? Well, right now, we're back right where we started. You know, Salina, OG, and Defiance appear to be the three best teams in the conference. They're all winning in different ways a little bit. Salina, obviously, has got six guys who can score. OG's got Bramley's and eight guys that play around him. Defiance is very solid defensively. They're the three top teams in the conference again, and we're going to start settling things pretty quickly. Well, not too many league games have been played yet, right. even though these, these holiday tournaments took place and everything. Once we get into league players, is there any team that you're looking at that maybe can steal this league? Well, I think those three teams are the guys at the top. Those are the ones we're going to start with. And it's going to kind of settle itself out a little bit because over the next three weeks, they all kind of match up and play each other. Uh, Salina has a home game this week with Ottawa Glandorf. The following week, they have a home game with Defiance. And the week after that, Defiance goes to Ottawa Glandorf. So what we pick to be the top three teams in the conference are all going to match up over the next three weeks. Oh, that's going to be fun to watch over, really over that time period. What about the, the MAC? The, we talked about the MAC a little earlier in the year, and Versailles the big story there, Kyle Arns returning, but yep. Marion Local's playing really well as well. You know, th that's a conference I think we're really going to have to study a little bit. Let's start with the Flyers because they played five games in eight days. I thought it was a pretty good idea, you know, when you talk about football and pushing your schedule back and where are we going to end up and all that type of thing. They played a lot of games over the Christmas break. They, they say they played five games in eight days. They won some of those basketball games. They had a good tournament run down in the, in the Coldwater tournament. So they got some good things going down there, but now they can just practice and play through the rest of the year. Weather won't be as big a situation. They have to cancel some games because of weather and then jam them in a little bit later on. I think a really good, smart move about getting games over Christmas they've lost with their tournament football. Yeah, that's a great point. And also, yep. St. Henry in the MAC, and we know what they can do and what Ryan Mikesell can do. Right. And a great championship game against Salina in that holiday tournament in Coldwater. You know, I think the interesting thing about that Coldwater tournament was how Salina or how uh, St. Henry won because on Friday night they beat Coldwater by scoring 62 points. They come back on Saturday night, they beat Salina by giving Salina just 41 points. And Good a defense. team that's averaging in the upper 60s. So they've won a couple of different ways and I thought that was really kind of important for them. Mike sells good. We know that. They've had eight different players at St. Henry make a three-point field goal this year. Wow. So they can surround him with guys who can score. It's a good basketball team. And here's something we're going to hear a lot of. Their only loss, Rushi Raiders. They're really good down at Rushi. We'll talk about them later in the show if we have time to get to it. But that's the only loss for St. Henry this yeah, year. Yeah, we'll definitely get to Rushi. Yep. A lot of people saying they could be a Final Four that's team. Right. A lot of other teams in the area could be Who do you like in the MAC to come out of this league? If I had to put you on the spot. <laughs> Well, that's a really tough one. I, I like Versailles because I like Kyle Arns. I like St. Henry because of what they do down there. And let's don't leave out Delphi St. John's because they're playing well right now. I, I don't know. Marion Local's good. We, we know we, we got some people that can score. they got size there. If I had to go with anybody, I'd go with Kyle Arns and Versailles right now. They've got a lot of tough games coming up. They, they play Fort Laramie this weekend on Saturday night. Obviously, that's a non-league game. The following weekend, though, they have St. Henry and LCC at St. Henry. There's a big game right there, and probably the winner of that game will be favored the rest of the way. Yeah, huge. So we got the MAC is wide open, and now the NWC appears pretty wide open as well. Who do you like there, Mark? Remember the football season? Yeah, Every we couldn't week figure we came it out. In here, we we went, couldn't oh, figure it out. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, let, we could just run down. A That's list why I of asked teams. you. I didn't know yeah, either. Well, so. We could just run down a list of teams who could be good and, and who could win that particular conference, and that might be one that somebody goes, you know, six and two or something like that, and ties with somebody else. Groves off to a good start at five and zero. Darbyshire can flat score. He's got he's averaged about twenty two points a game. He's made twelve three point field goals already. They average sixty five points a game. Uh, you know they've got some tough games coming up here a little bit later on, but um, particularly road games at Spenceville and at Bluffton, at Lincoln View. So they've got some tough games going along. Let's start with Grove and, and put them near the top, if not there. What about Bluffton? Bluffton's undefeated. What's been the key to their early success? Well, first of all, they have four guys that can score. They have four guys that average between 9 points and 14 points a game. It makes them hard to guard because you can't focus and take a particular player out. They've had three different players lead them in scoring this year, so they're really hard to guard. And then Coach Boblet's system is we're going to run set plays over and over and over again until we get the shot that we want. And when they get a lead, they're very difficult to beat. Nice wins in their tournament that they had. You know, they defeated, uh, what, uh, Arlington. They defeated Corey Rawson and Arlington in the finals, of course. They held Arlington to just 22 points. Part yeah. of that's solid defense, too. So uh, good things going on in Bluffton right now. They're 7-0. Speaking of Arlington, that transitions us into the BVC, which is another conference where we're, you know, it's, it's just so early. And we, we've said that basketball season is long. And, you know, unlike football season where there's only 10 games, you know, yep. a loss is not fatal. 
But still, you're trying to figure out who's where. And in the BBC, what do you see? It's, it's wide open, right? I would agree with that, Matt. I think it's a really wide open situation right now. I mean, you can look at all the different components in there. Right now, Liberty Benton's 4-0 in conference play. They're 0-4 out of conference. Right. So, you know, how do you, how do you match that up? And obviously, two of those losses are Ottawa, Glendorf, and LCC. Two other ones are Bath and Wapak, so they play bigger schools, and obviously two of those teams are very, very good in OG and LCC. And the other games have been close. Uh, I, is Liberty Benton a favorite? Well, they're 4-0 right now. Macomb, they're 5-1, and they're 3-0 in conference play, but their loss is to Bluffton, a very good Bluffton team who's undefeated. I think Macomb's in the, in the running, but really there are 12 teams in that conference, and right now there's six or eight of them. You can throw a net out and say that could be the champion before we're done. Well, one of them is Liberty Benton, as you mentioned, and you picked up on something very interesting in a game you called over that break. It was Liberty Benton running the Princeton offense. Yep. So let's take a look at Liberty Benton doing what they do so well, and you can help break it down for us and, and tell us what you see here, Mark. They're playing the Thunderbirds at LCC. This is the very first possession of the game, and you can see there are five guys on the perimeter. That's what they want to do. They want to get back cuts. You saw 14 try to make a back cut, 12 tries to make a back cut. What they want to do is get back cuts, and if you really lay off of them, they'll shoot the three ball then. It's a good offense because it allows them to control the pace of the game, but it also allows them to get quick hitters if they would like to do this. One of the things you really like to see is a back cut layup. Here's the pass right here. Here's the screen. And here comes the back cut layup. The defensive player turns his back and watches the ball. Back cut layup. Two points for Liberty Benton. Unfortunately for them, it was the highlight of the basketball game because LCC was really good after. Here we see it again. Here's the pass. Watch the defender 23 turn his back. And there's a dump down inside. The help is a little bit slow. That's perfect execution of their offense. As you can see, it took 45 seconds off the clock. Now we're going to head over to the field house at Elida and get ready for some dunks. That's Jay Thomas on the alley-oop for Elima Senior. And then the inbounds to Rico Stafford. Yeah, that's an Ohio State play right there where they fake the up screen. Here comes Stafford again. The pass is right in front of the rim and obviously with Rico's uh, talent as far as getting off the floor. And here's the other thing they do. They go in transition. Long rebound that you sometimes get off of three balls and Stafford out in transition finishes with the dunk. But that was one side of the story in this game. This man, Josh Press, was the other because he was on fire. Josh Press with 10 three-point field goals. Six of them come in the third quarter. He took some shots. I'm working with Dave Freilich, and we're a couple of old-time basketball coaches, and we're going, would you let him shoot that, Dave? And Dave says, I don't know. Time out. Dave, let him shoot that? I don't know. By the time he makes the 10th one, let him shoot it anytime I think that's exactly what Denny Thompson was saying. And watch some of these that he gets it late in the game. This one's in the fourth. And, and this next one coming up, he's, he's back by Denny yeah. Thompson. He's over closer to Coach Thompson than he is to the three-point line. This one right here, this is as deep as it gets. And this is when you got – it's your night, you know. You, you're feeling you, it. You're feeling it. He's got 32 points on the game. Ten of them were three-point field goals for his 30 and then a two-point goal a little bit later on. But uh, you just shot him back into the basketball game. When you got a guy that hot, you just keep feeding him. Well, I'm a senior did get the win in that game, they even did. though Press put on a show for that field house crowd. So the track, big game in the track on Tuesday night. Right. Lima Senior defeated Finley. Is Lima Senior the team to beat in the Three Rivers Athletic Conference? I, th I think there's a, it's kind of a three or four team race. I think that was a very important win for the Spartans to go up to Finley and win. Now we all know, we've talked about it many, many times, they lost nine consecutive games to Finley, and Finley's style is very difficult for them to play against. They hold on to the basketball, they don't make mistakes, they don't turn it over, they, they really have kind of a possession type game for them. That's the way it started out. It was 15-7. The Spartans got it going. Big second quarter, stretched it out. That was a really, really important win for them. But look at some of the other things that are going on in the conference. The Toledo St. John's is undefeated in conference play. They already have an overtime win at Lima Senior. Mm -hmm. uh, my fear is at some point in the season we're going to go to the Spartans. It's too bad that was your opening conference game at home right. with a new coach, just your second game. And how would they play later on? Spartans obviously have a chance to go up there and play later on against them. The other one I think we need to really look at so far is Toledo Central Catholic. They blew out Clay last night. They're 3-0 in conference play. They got a late start because of football. Central Catholic is good. We'll have to see who, which of those three teams hangs on, and can anybody like Finley pull an upset like they could have done last night? How do you think Lima Senior has gelled so far? We know it's a lot of new guys and a new head coach. Well, I think it, it's kind of a work in progress, I would say. I mean, I know Coach Simpson started a lot of different lineups. For example, last night he started Elias Wright because he's so solid defensively. So I think it's kind of a work in progress. Uh, if I had a guy I would really choose, and I know the flashy thing is Xavier Simpson and Rico Stafford and, and Pugsley, those are kind of the flashy guys that do things. I really like Jalen Thomas. 
He's a big body. He's physically strong. He can go inside and score. He can rebound. He's a good defender. He made a three-point field goal of the last couple of basketball games. He's kind of the quiet guy, averaging 10 points a game, but I really like what Jay Thomas does for his team. He's been impressive so he really far. Has. Let's move to the PCL, and a team you mentioned before in Columbus Grove also plays in the PCL yeah. along with the NWC. So are they the favorite in this conference? Well, let's start out with a little bit about how difficult that is to play in two different leagues. And, and you know, when you got a Friday night game in the NWC and a Saturday night game, Game or perhaps a Tuesday game and you have to come back and every game counts when you're trying to play in two different conferences. I think that's kind of difficult for Grove to do. We'll see. They have LCC on Saturday night this weekend. Big game obviously, for them. Yeah, it's a huge game and I know a couple guys from LCC are hurt, but still it'll be a very difficult, challenging type of game. That'll give us a, a read on Columbus Grove. There's some other teams like in that conference too. Collida's pretty good as well. Collida's pretty good. They had a nice win They're the young. other night. They're young. Uh, just the one senior in Beerhoff who's averaging about 17 points and a game. And cracks as well. Uh, Cracks. That's, uh, yeah. sorry, you're right. Thanks for <laughs> too many guys. There's a lot of guys. Uh, we cover a lot, a lot of guys. Trying to cover a lot of leagues here. <laughs> and we're right. going to keep it moving. NWCC. USV's playing pretty well. Do you like them? Who, who, how does this league I shake do. out? I, I like USV. I think that's kind of a three team race right now. USV, but let's look at USV's loss. Miller City. Yeah. And, and that's my PCL team. I just love Miller City Miller because they can, they can shoot the basketball. I have a chance to see them this coming Saturday night with a Pandora Gilboa. But that's USV's only loss. They're really good. Hurley's a good point guard. They've got a couple other guys at Rostrofer and, and Rose and some guys that can really score and do some things. Perry's played very well. They started the season 0-3. Yep. They're on a roll since that particular time. And Lehman's been scoring a lot of points. I know they're on kind of on the southern end of us, and we lose track of them sometimes. But I think those are probably the three best teams in the NWCC. Yeah, it's been pretty competitive in that league so far. It really far. is. So yep. let's finish up with the Rushi Raiders and yep. a little bit Shelby County. What has made them so successful so far? Because a lot of team, a lot of People have them on their radar for a deep postseason run. They really do. A lot of people talk about Rushi Raiders being a top four, final four type team. They can score. They've been in the 90s a couple of times. And this started last summer. We started hearing rumors about, hey, you know, that Rushi just blew out somebody in a, in a yeah. summer tournament type thing. And they've really scored a lot of points here in the month of December. The SCAL, they play everybody twice. And that's kind of an interesting thing because it's a home and away thing. So you play them the first time, everybody scouts you. They come back with a different game plan the second time. So we'll see how Rushi reacts to that right now but they are really playing well and they can flat score. Well, that's where we stand right now, yep. first week of January. I'm sure it'll all change in seven days, and we'll be here to recap it for you then. But at least we, we know where we stand right now, and we've got a lot of good basketball to look forward to, and including a lot that you can watch right here on WOSN. Let's run through our broadcast schedule for you, Mark. Call out where you're going to be. Okay. Three games on Friday. Starts with Minster versus Marion Local Girls. Nice MAC matchup there. That's Friday at 9 p.m. Then at 10:30, Delphus Jefferson versus Crestview in That's NWC. Me. You'll be there. I want to see because Jefferson can score. They, yes, they, those two guys, Smith and uh, and Stockwell, they're just lighting everybody up there. The Smith's got what six games over th between yeah. over 30 points. So yeah, that's where I'm going to be Friday. Well, that should be an yeah. entertaining one for sure. Then following the sports report at 10:44 on WTLW, LCC versus Columbus Grove, another big one we yep. just mentioned. Then we've got three more for you. Saturday starts at six. Park Waivers for Sales Boys. Saturday, 7.30, OG versus Salina boys. Maybe a WBL yep. championship preview. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Saturday at 10.30, following the sports report on WTLW, St. Mary's versus Spencerville boys. So good matchups there. Yeah, two teams that, that can score. You know, that'd be an interesting matchup. They have very balanced scoring on both teams. Then four games on Sunday. We're not yep. done yet. 4.30, Columbus Grove versus Ottoville girls. Going to talk some more girls next week, I'm hoping, right. too. There's a, there's a lot of good stuff going on mm -hmm. on the girls' side, with this being our first show back after the break, kind of to cover all the boys' angles for you. Sunday at 6, USV versus Ada boys. Sunday at 7.30, Miller City versus Pandora Gilboa boys. That's me. And that's you again. I love to see Miller City because they can score. I'm and you're going to see a pretty good young yes. PG team as well. That's right. PG team is young and getting better. Right. Sunday at 9, LCC versus Delta St. John's boys. So that'll round out the broadcast schedule for us. Thanks for joining us here on this edition of Mark's Madness. For Mark Shine, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time on WOSN.